So here we're going to talk a little more specifically about the things that influence sediment transport, starting with uh, what makes sediment move downriver. And the biggest thing, of course, is if you increase river discharge or velocity, you're going to be increasing sediment transport. And that's what this figure is showing you here with a suspended sediment load on the x-axis increasing logarithmically, and then discharge in cubic feet per second increasing along the y-axis, again logarithmically. So as you increase discharge, you're increasing really quickly the amount of sediment load that that river is carrying. So particle properties also matter. The size, how big a particle is, and how heavy a particle is. So big, heavy things will be transported less or not as far as small, light things. So comparing here gravel to clay. So clay will get transported a lot farther than a large piece of gravel or even a boulder. Okay, so in general, kind of combining the, the ideas of discharge and density and radius, uh, high discharge or high velocity moves bigger, heavier particles. So something you're probably not, or you probably have thought of before. Okay, so sediment settling, on the other hand, taking something out of transport, depends again on the particle properties and also the fluid properties of air and water. So in this class we count air as a fluid as well, but here we'll be talking mainly about water. Okay, so this figure here is showing you flow velocity here on the y-axis and the diameter increasing of sediment on the x-axis. And here I just want you to focus on this blue line. We'll come back to the rest of this figure later. Uh, this blue line is settling velocity. So this is the velocity at which a particle of any size falls out of the water column or settles down to the bottom of a river. So a big particle, big heavy particle, will fall or come out of the water column or settle at a much higher velocity than something that's really much smaller, like a particle of silt. It takes a really slow water velocity before that will settle out of a water column. So bigger particles settle, settle at higher velocities. Um, similarly, uh, dense, heavy particles will settle at faster or at higher velocities, and larger particles will settle at higher velocities. OK, so fluid properties also matter. There's fluid density to think about. So the denser a fluid is, the more slowly it will settle through that fluid, so air not very dense. Uh, if you drop a penny in air, it will fall pretty quickly to the ground. If you drop that same penny in the water, which is more dense, it will fall a lot more slowly. Fluid viscosity is another thing that's important. Uh, it creates resistance to flow and deformation of that fluid. So, um, for example, air is not very viscous. Um, the molecules don't really stick together, which is what viscosity uh, has to do with, sort of interactions between particles. Air molecules sort of flow right around each other, so something flowing through air isn't, doesn't have that sort of resistance, whereas water, we know that water molecules kind of stick together right through hydrogen bonding, so if you drop something in that fluid, it, you not only have the density of that fluid to, to deal with, you also have those sort of interactions, the stickiness of those molecules to deal with and move through, so resistance to flow in two ways. Okay, so sediment settling, a summary sort of, depends on the particle properties, the size and weight, and also the fluid properties, density and viscosity. So there are also some other forces that counteract settling. We've already talked a little bit about velocity in terms of discharge, so high velocity, high discharge keeps particles moving. Turbulence, uh, we haven't talked about that yet, but you can probably imagine a mixing turbulent fluid is going to keep things out of, or keep things in the water column. And then also the concentration gradient, which you might not have thought of before. Okay, so here is that figure again, and one of the main ideas of this figure is that the velocity required to pick up a particle is, is generally greater than the velocity that's needed to stay in suspension. So what, we'll start with this red line here. This is the velocity required to pick up or erode a particle from the bottom of a river. Um, and what you can see here is that you need actually a pretty high velocity to erode these small particles, particularly clays, uh, 
and some silts, and that's because there are interactions between those particles. Uh, if you recall, some clays are charged, most clays are charged, so they kind of can stick together a little bit. So it takes a higher velocity to pick up those particles, sort of unstick them and get them in the water column. Uh, same is somewhat true for silt, but then by the time you get to sand, you have a lot less of those interactions between particles, so it's a, it's a little bit easier to pick up those particles, so you don't need as high of a velocity for sand as you do for silt and clay. And then by the time you get to these bigger particles, of course, then you're getting these big, heavy particles that are just kind of hard to pick up. So you need a higher velocity for those particles as well, So which that's why you get this sort of dip in this, in this line. And the area between this erosion line and the blue settling velocity line is where these particles of different sizes stay in the water column. So once they're eroded, they don't settle until you hit this settling velocity down here. So everything in this sort of area and uh, stays in the water column. Okay, so fluid turbulence, of course, mixes things up. So particles that might be just about to hit the bottom of a river might get caught in an eddy and swirled back up. So these fluid turbulence keeps things mixing and keeps particles in suspension. Okay, so something you might not have thought about is the impact of a sediment concentration gradient. And that is what this figure here is trying to show you. This is the surface of the water. This is the a riverbed, essentially. So this is the water column here. And as you go down towards the, the bed of a river, the sediment gradient, or the concentration of sediment increases, right? So you've got sort of more sediment down near the bottom of the river than you do up higher. So based on what we know about how diffusion works in relation to a gradient, how would you predict, or what would you predict is the direction of diffusion? So you might want to pause and think about that for a moment. And in general, it's going to be up, right? So the things diffuse from high to low concentration. So if we've got high concentration down here by the riverbed, lower concentration up, things will be diffusing this way. So this actually has a role in counteracting the settling of sediment from, from out of the water column to the riverbed. So this is just a different way of um, kind of looking at that. You've got gravity that wants things to settle, and then you've got diffusion sort of working against that force. Okay, so kind of summing up particle transport. Um, we have already talked about that it's a source of pollutants and sediment sources can vary based on parent material like granite versus a sandstone or land use and land management practices, whether you have a forest or whether you use cover crops on your field, that sort of thing. And then sediment transport tends to increase with river discharge, increase with velocity, and decreases with particle size and density. Particle settling, that's what works against transport, um, depends again on particle properties, density and size, and the fluid properties, density and viscosity. And then we have these things that prevent settling fluid velocity, fluid turbulence, and again, that concentration gradient. So much of the, all of these ideas are put into one equation. I know you've been waiting for it, and it's Stokes' Law. So this is the equation that we use to estimate settling velocity, and I know it looks a little bit sort of big and messy, but actually we have a lot of these numbers already and um, often consider them constant. So WF here, is our settling velocity in terms of length over time. G is a constant, it's acceleration due to gravity, so you'll always have that number. DP is particle density, it's mass per volume, and we usually assume that that's 2.6 grams per cubic centimeter. DF is, in this case, we're gonna be doing the fluid density of water, which is one gram per cubic centimeter. And then again, the, the denominator here, is fluid viscosity, which again we're going to be using for water um, of 0 0.013 um, square centimeters per second. So a lot of those numbers we'll have and you'll just be able to plug them in and use that and we'll have an example of that for you to do in the pre-lecture. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thanks for going along with it and um, that's it for sediment transport.